I ended up writing this book after I lost two friends. The book is dedicated to um, Alexis and Donna. Now, Alexis Rivera was a trans activist and an HIV educator who be zero converted and refused to think of the irony is refused to treat herself. She refused to take her drugs. She denied it, denied it, denied it because in some of the communities that we have, the stigma of not somebody with HIV, but the stigma of somebody who's supposed to be an HIV educator mm -hmm. getting caught with this. Um, so she just denied, denied, denied. And, um, and it was really rough. You're not supposed to see this happen in 2012. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, what does one do with this? And, uh, and then, I don't know if you remember, there's something called the Fully Functional Cabaret. Yeah. Annie Danger yeah. put that on. Um, and then that was going through. And, and then I also had this beautiful reading over at uh, Barnard with Don Ostrowski. Yeah, and she was another one who killed herself. So what does one do? Uh, one thing I've noticed that helps is applying poetry to it. Now they say control yourself, control yourself, control yourself, but control yourself is garbage unless there's something else. Control yourself for a better effect, to make a better difference. See, if you just say, you know, if you just say stupid queer, shut up and get in line, no. But if you show me something at the end, if you do this, you will trouble your power. You will increase your power by exponentially because people will listen to you that wouldn't have listened to you before. You know, in, in times like that, this is where I think poetry really shines. I mean, it, it, you know, it, the control you have, the beat, the meter, it forces you to look at your language. Now there's control there, but after the control, the end result after control is a better mind. You don't sound stupid. You don't sound like you're, you don't sound like you're um, complaining. You sound like you're powerful, and you sound like this must happen. And you know, frankly, as, as an Asian woman now, you're just trying to say something, I need enough of that because society has this weird habit of wanting to talk over us. So that's, that's that. The other thing about, as a trans person, I think we have as an advantage in, in writing poetry is, we think about poetry as, you know, taking on the big questions of life. Right? I mean, why am I here? You know, why is this body? You know, and for us, literally, who we are is something we are very, very, very good at mulling over. Because we wouldn't put ourselves through this if we didn't have good reason. So, that kind of thinking combined with the urge to write poetry, it actually helps to crystallize things. Because, I mean, we can't be out of control. We will kill ourselves. This, you know, when we talk about poetic form, our bodies themselves are poetic forms. They are a combination of rage and need and passion, yet control. And in the hope that we can do more good. And so in a lot of ways, uh, a trans identity and a trans embodiment, actually in my eyes, um, parallel. What a, what a poem should be, you know, and and also the crystallization of it all that you know a poem just you know poem is and the world revolves around it, and you think about all of these feminist theories, all of these essentialist theories, all of these you know various gender sex theories, we we embody that and the world tries to examine us around us. You know what does that mean? Which is the same thing that a good poem does to a bunch of critics. So, you know. The, the thing about trans folk is I think in a world that expects, expects people to be pros, we show up as poems, and that messes with people. <laughs> I needed the long poem form. I, I didn't want to just blurt things out. I wanted to tell a story, but I didn't want to give the reader the comfort of prose. I wanted to keep the reader uncomfortable. Why? Because I was mad at the reader. If we have time, I'll read some prose, and you'll see when I'm actually being gentle. But I was no gentle mood. I've got like, you know, no. So I'm going to use poetry, and I'm going to make you not, I'm going to make you uncomfortable. But also, I've got a long story to tell. 
the other thing about a, a small po a short poem is a short poem has this deceptiveness to it. Yeah, a short poem, you know, short poems should be taken deeply, but because there's a beginning, middle, and an end, people can just say, I'm just going to wait till the end and get out. I didn't want to do that to the reader. I wanted to bury you. So what I did was I wrote three long sequences. You know, so they're about like 10, 20, you know, 10, 15 pages each. Why? Because I wanted to take you under. I didn't want to let you go. So the three big divisions here are in, in So Why Dust Shall Never Settle Upon the Soul is actually the name for the longest poem in this book. And it comes in The Woman of Water Dreams, Song of Someplace Yet to Fall, After a Lifetime Saving the World. So The Woman of Water Dreams is actually this idea of, so it's not the, you know, you can read it, The Woman of Water dream, Dreams of Water or The Woman of Water Dreams. Mm -hmm. And I, again, I'm just mad. <laughs> okay, and sometimes I'll just throw metaphors and they will make sense, but in general it's because, you know, it's like, no, you don't get this easy. Um, and so, you know, and in a way it's kind of like, you know, what is the, what is the modifier, what is the noun, mm -hmm. and is trans a modifier, or, mm -hmm. and, and that. And I think about trans and water, and I think of them together a lot, because trans is supposedly this mutative, this mutable sort of fluid, literally fluid thing, and yet water is water is water is water. And so that's kind of what we're up to. Consider that for every rational number there exists an infinite array of values that do not resolve. The dead or frightened house cat, the slipshod dance of sun and moon. A Shanghai butterfly splits the baryons of a faraway nucleus and you wonder why I like donuts too much? Against infinite babble, any rational value is nothing, so nothing makes sense. Terrifying to consider this now when so many friends have died. One morning, a gunman shot up our library. Oh, by the way, I also talk about um, at Santa Monica College, somebody shot up our school. Shot up our library, killed the groundskeeper who waved from the yellow electric car. For all he was, he'll now forever be known as the groundskeeper. His daughter was killed as well. For all she was, she will always be known as the groundskeeper's daughter. What is true and proud? What survives the in infinite crush of hidden, transient, and loss? The murderer sees you or no. The family accepts you or no. Your blood test comes clean or no. Who pop and locked with the beautiful men free falling past mornings after, holding quilts and lovers and ashes? For what? A green light too early? A stutter step late? What is life well lived? Who fluffs a pillow through the luck of a silenced phone? But that we meant more in being than being wherever we are? With another November, the names of trans people change color and fall. Mispronounced, sainted, seated to anonymous candles, anonymous flame. Someone will pledge money, someone will start singing. I think someone inspired will say, I think all hatred is that. Why can't life just be good for everyone? Past each favorite cousin, each favorite movie, each crisp new, new resume, past each broken heel, fall wax and remembrance for a moment still warm to the touch. She was fierce, an angel on earth, enchanting. I smell carne asada and hear the number four bus. The hole in my heart murmurs, yes, yes, yes. Stunted fathers, neglected boys, cocktails of hormones and stress-altered wounds, healing the village, speaking with the dead, dancing to the heavens for fortunes and rain, blessed goddesses, prophets, mermaids, and rainbow flags in the almost tenure-track position in the nuclear studies department. Teeth kicked out, jawbones foot stomped onto sidewalks. False lashes and fables, entrance another's ever after. Lace and illusion entangle the bedpost as I rattle my vanity for foundation, conceal it, a face to a mispronounced name. She killed herself the way queer folks do. Riding of one-horned aliens and road rage unicorns. She killed herself the way queer folks, queer folks do. Living as role model, inspiration to all but what true love knows. Behind the fishing poles, there's her Coleman ice chest and Lionel train. A tiny wooden stool with marks of Crayola and someone's baby teeth. I pray, I try to pray, yet thirst only for silence, for sleep. 
lost in the desert, the woman of water dreams. Obon, vigils, Hanukkah. I've learned we used to be healers. I've learned we used to be beloved. Vigils, birthdays, vigils. Don't know what else I've learned, except we know a lot of dead people. Candles, more candles, more candles, more. Be yourself, sure. Festoon yourself in sideshow sequins, thrift, to thrift store sex. The world comes, vomits, locks its children away. The sales clerk watches too closely. Your hometown is not your hometown. Live without apology. Sure. Have your life debated by experts you've never met, cast out by Ohana that you never knew. Ask who hides from family, from women, that the D, that the S triggers long after the T should be P. Ask who can visit the supermarket for orange juice, salad dressing, and paper towels. Maybe tomorrow it'll be different, but today, ask why you were born today. Ask why, what is good or bad. Ask what is justice. Ask how eternal truths should rest so much upon today. My mother stirs her pot of spare ups with brown sugar and soy sauce, with vinegar and regret for a son who wasted his life on Lord knows what. No wedding, no future, not even a house. Steam rises from the stock pot like stories of spices, songs, and all the home this girl will never know. From the one who calls gay people it, hears immigrants and AIDS and would dis disown her firstborn if she knew what sins her sins have spawned. That I could tell her now, how I stir my verse with Lahaina girl rhythm, how in my kitchen she would know every pot and pan and spice. The flesh grows tender, the flavors bind, waiting for that moment just before it burns just before I leave, just before another trans woman obliterated on a Facebook page or down the street or just before my mother's eyes. Last post on Facebook. Someone misdialed her number but called her a faggot anyway. Last, book on, last post on Facebook. We should all remember her by donating, donating to someone else's nonprofit transgender study. What is sacred? What is sure? It is comforting to declare I've always been me, but my friends used to call. My auntie once held me as I slept. Run, fall, flash back to a beating. As I hold the next drink, the next cigarette, the next stranger's lies against my tongue. The phone is ringing. Do I let it go? Tchaikovsky litters the asylums. Dickinson rips the wings off a lady slipper orchid. Thoreau clouds, claws, where am I? And lungs as flat as unfallen snow. People I promise to remember forever change the moment they leave and every day before. Who loved? Who bled? Who recorded the first words I said? Who read to shut my careless eyes? Who said before they realized that I could one day be dead? To them, their world, their prayers, that they'd be with me no matter where I went. Where was that message sent? For I'm not the same person I was then, and will never return to that there and then. No matter how I may or may not try, release, remember, goodbye. Consider the irrational array of moments where a single rational value does not resolve. The cat survives, the moon recedes, the sashimi is trendy, delicious, in danger. People die for what I am. People insist what I am has no meaning at all. Waiting by the windowsill with laptop, a cup of coffee and a donut. To be yourself, you seed yourself to the butterflies and to the baryons and to the wind and no one to answer tranquility. So that's the first chunk. It's almost like I'm stating, if I were to give a proof, I'm defining my terms. So, what did you think about? I'm actually liking this reading a lot. I'm yeah, talking yeah. with I'm talking with family. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's powerful. I'm not sure I can formulate an immediate response beyond that. It's really interesting because when you were talking before about creating this effect of discomfort for the reader, mm -hmm. I could feel that it wouldn't. It kept refusing to settle and get like. Some, it wasn't easy to like just lose 
like you had to be sort of really attentive to where it's going, right? Mm -hmm. But I, it, but it wasn't uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Or maybe it's just because. Well, it's because we're family. Yeah, writing. that's it's like. But yeah, and that <laughs> was the idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And what I'm hoping yeah. is it gives you an awareness that there's this code language we all yeah. speak. Right? Yeah, Ugh, I like that code code language. And and yeah. that you 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 know sometimes we use it or we're aware of it, but we don't necessarily appreciate it. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it's another thing that we should be proud of. Yeah. It kind of helps keep us together and alive. And I wanted to speak that code language very much in this book yeah. because I wanted to. I wanted the experience of a trans reader to be different from the experience of a cis reader. Yeah. On, um, you know, one, well, one because I'm, ha you know, I'm hating on the cis world yeah. when I'm writing this, <laughs> but also it shouldn't just all be about hate because you know, pros can do this. But I mean, poetry, I demand more. Right. Mm -hmm. Poetry mm -hmm. should work in a way that if you know, it's like almost like um, you know, an Alexandrite under different light, it's got a different color. Yeah. And what I want is to be inclusive and somehow you know, affirming to trans folk while at the mm -hmm. same time a little disturbing to cis folk. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that. Now this next thing, a song of, um, the next piece here, a song of someplace yet to fall. What I was trying to do here was turning my anger and my ideas towards the queer communities okay. and also the people who want to pave everything over with platitudes that get us nowhere. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, also unveil that even within our community, there are divisions of race, there are divisions of class mm -hmm. that, you know, we kind of should be addressing. Mm -hmm. um, so this is now, now that I've kind of defined my terms, now it's like, okay, but I am not going to let, you know, let them go gently because mm -hmm the night's getting dark and we gotta do something, you know, to mangle Dylan Thomas. So this particular one is much more now, it, now that, you know, it gets a little bit more of sort of a personal declaration of, you know, so why does she'll never settle upon the soul, basically, you know, uh, to me that just means, you know, it's like, you're gonna kill me. No, what the hell's wrong with you? You, don't, you know, it's like, and, and it's that kind of a feeling. Right. And I really needed to, to make that feeling, to get, get, kind of shake people away from the sense of, you know, Compromise. <laughs> so anyway, here we go. And they're all roughly the same length, so now you kind of know what you're doing. Okay, so what can one do when brilliant friends who remain brilliant leave? The Egyptian astrologer encanting psalms of forgotten souls gone. The space-time composer with pocket universe of beat match LEDs away. The Enlightenment weaver threading certain and unfallen yarns, never to look back. What can one do when those who taste prophecy in a teaspoon feel symphonies in a Van Nuys cul-de-sac, hear colors amongst the coldest February gray, at a pronoun find nothing worth another thought? Grab the mic, cue the karaoke. What else could this be but a song? By now, I was supposed to have mall walked to arthritic elderhood. Tia Rika perched upon padded chair to speak lovingly of arena, fuck, fang, the downtown loft with the best cocaine, peanuts where Sinead O'Connor hid between the inside wall and her outside bodyguard, cinematic illusions, drag shows at the old Queen Mary, cutting lines of the hardest house as the gorgeous ones danced for sip vodka tonics or gave head in lime green restroom stalls of how the strobe lights knew to stop at makeup and glitter to leave us weary as the dead morning streets when the mockingbirds sang and the battered pickup trucks came to stack the LA Express kiosks with free tranny ads to remind us there was someplace yet to fall. Never expected to school board, to wake to school boards banning Harper Lee. Evolution is a fad. Six sisters refusing their meds. Never expected to revisit the mucus, the wasting, the blindness, the heart lung gurgles of the struggling through one last hopeless night with that guilty final wish that she would just die. Who would have thought survival might rest upon how long one holds her melody, her sobriety, and her breath? Slam faces, slam doors, a cold KFC bucket, some coleslaw someone pulled from a dumpster. It gets better, what does that mean? Might Hello Kitty sing, a mother cry? Would a father even miss the Disneyland daughter he hadn't seen since she was supposed to be his boy? 
we must remember those transgenders who simply wanted to be themselves. She was cosmic head scars, tap dance fingertips, and origami eyes. She was satin camisoles, bedsheet corsets, flowers, cards, the hospice lobby for those too courageous to walk inside. There is nothing simple about her or her or her or her or her or her. Bless those who disown their sons, yet say they listen to the same punk rock as they always have. Bless those whose children fled on a nighttime Greyhound bus, yet still bake cookies with raisins instead of chocolate chips. May God help those proper Presbyterians who kick out their daughters, whose NPR membership leads to nights discussing the oppressed people of the day and how it's maddening but not realistic to demand justice for another generation or three. Light a candle. Loop a ribbon. For in a world without runaways, cast-offs, and queers, who shall redeem the rope and the razors and the cans of gasoline? After life comes death. After death comes the community memorial. After the community memorial comes the HIV questionnaire. Then some grad student discards the personal comments and performs tea tests on the numbers that remain. A null hypothesis, a grant proposal. Hey, new coffee maker. Four miles south, bulletproof windows, two for one pizza, cash to go, one dollar Chinese food. And the scholars go, I am sure that I'm sure, so sure that I can assure you for, sh for sure that surely you are not sure who you are. And the best way to ensure who you are, I'm sure, is for you to be sure you are sure that until I can be sure you are sure who you are, you surely can't be sure you are sure. So don't say you are sure because surely I'm sure that you can't be sure. Meanwhile, on the streets, it's time to get authentic and start shouting, we shall overcome. Invoke the right Frida. Quote the right Audra. Lord, to shake things up, to organize, to close one's eyes and righteously fantasize of a favorite, a favorite genderqueerish hottie with a dancer's ass, chestnut thighs, dreads, and high, high cheekbones. Auto-tuned in search of food trucks, riding day-glow fixies for anarchy and fair trade. Americanos they consume to get real, get hard, and get laid. Revolution? A blood sport. Because dead queers are easier to pray to, because they don't, cut, they don't talk back and kill your buzz. Another sodden morning. Another wrench at due. In another life, someone skins a plum, frowns, then spits what clings too tart and tightly to the seed. But I am not cruelty free. I do not offer a gluten free option. I won't talk like a pirate. I won't pump up the volume, get wasted, have sex with you at Burning Man. I won't <laughs> dig your hip hop, save the planet at this badass rally, talk Chinese, support your Greenpeace, stop eating sushi, forsake animal proteins, watch Glee, ride a pixie, donate to Indie, go go, Lego, your fucking ego. <laughs> I start my Honda to my favorite freezer section. Soft shoe past the okra and peas, waltz by the briar's caramel praline crunch. You miss Chick-fil-A? I am my own guilty pleasure. The security guard, the cashier, even the cart with one stock step wheel cannot stop the revel of this nighttime promenade. Twenty years ago, the astrologer would not suspend his disbelief. Ten years ago, the composer could not harmonize transgender with friend. Five years ago, the weaver unraveled a rainbow at my name. To pull a sweater from my closet, to shove my cell phone in my purse, then march for groceries with a five minute stop at CVS. The composer may abandon his backbeat. The with astrology, astrologer may withhold his gaze. The weaver may sever the threads of youth, threads of self, even as she cuts another inconvenient thread, unable to grasp why dust will never settle upon the cell. So, the center section was the hardest piece to control. I wanted also to think about the idea of poetry as weapon or even provider of vitality mm. versus poem as that thing that shuts discussion off and reduces everything to a slogan. <laughs> what queers me even further is I'm a poet. So, you know, basically, I can't deal with she's in a better place, or she was, she, that girl was an angel. You hear that, how many times do you hear that when a trans woman dies? 
Yeah, it's dead language. It's dead language. And don't deaden the dead further mm -hmm. with this language that doesn't do their existence justice. Mm -hmm. So you can do better. Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, we just happen to be the latest and greatest of the oppressed people, but there's nothing magic about being trans. But we're so brave. Yes, oh yes, oh we are so brave. And inspiring. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, this last part here then is the exodus from this entire thing. And my answer to this whole thing was the personal, to personalize and be aware of the moments mm -hmm. and, and be very individual. And then the person you love is no longer community, but maybe one person becomes your world. Mm -hmm. So yeah, to Steph, who, anyway, let's just go. We scanned, so this one actually is very much situated in Los Angeles. So cause I figured, well, I'll give myself a home. I'm from LA, that's LA. This is Melanie Gilman, who's a dyke artist. I said, I really like your work. Could you please draw the cover? And they were apparently really happy to do the cover. And so this is going to be the showy evening primrose that I talked about. And then this is the lights from Griffith Park over LA. And so this is why that shall never settle up on the side. I love this cover. <laughs> so with all of this gratitude coming in and the family, this, this is where this, this is where I like people. We scan the market. We scan the farmer's market for crispest apples. It's the season for apples. Three blocks west, someone's dressed like Tinkerbell, posing with a, crowd, a couple from Spokane in front of Grumman's Chinese Theater. A snap, a smile, another sweet moment, another dollar made. Even here, we glean seasons by smell. Next door loquats, road trip cherries, backyard peaches, andre pears. My mother's got three bags of shiny persimmons in the patio. I have friends who insist there are no seasons in LA. Let them. Let them seize the imperatives, the correlations, and the communities, the arithmetic of greater numbers. Let each equation be more compelling than the last. Let glitter bedazzle death and angels. What is passed over will be there always. Past starlings and storefronts in the color of home. Let them prophesy all the time in the world. Fuck time's delicacy. Fruit does not spoil as long as it's forbidden. A philosopher once asked if I believed in God. My friend lost two friends. And one of them was my friend and so was another. And in the morning I could kiss you. Not to wake you, but to linger a little resting a bit where my nose still brushed your neck and yes, I was crying because you stirred and smiled and we were going shopping and it was still not even May. A philosopher once asked if I believed in God. I said, no, I have experience. And so even now, I can disbelieve all I want, but I shall always know that I would want another night next to you, breathing, dancing on byways, no matter how afraid. Up overhead, we peered at what snuggled the side of a Griffith Park ravine. We identified it with an app you downloaded from a cloud and sniffed a sprig of showy evening primrose to dream of planting in our someday garden, or at least until the allergies set in. I'm writing a speech to tell a group of earnest undergrads something hopeful and life-affirming. How does one say, trim just a bit of flesh? The glass slipper will fit. You'll get to the ball and dance with the prince. Feet blister, mouths bleed, rubber and cum. The backbeat fades to cross-gendered and cross-reference graves. Jesus, she was only 22. You may say, it's 4 a.m. and you'll be awake when you are and in the come and go of neutrinos and house cats. A sweetheart's note in a schoolyard beating. There is not enough courage in my hand but for the courage I hold in yours. What beatifies leftover lo mein? Styrofoam, chopsticks, plastic forks, two napkins, three packs of so crappy soy sauce. Neither of us will use. You slog home drenched and empty. From work you swear you only do for the money, though we both know otherwise. Rents increasing 4.5%. LA wants $61.42 in taxes we don't know. What trip to Paris? 
or hoping to visit the supermarket between paychecks. Leftovers for the walk, the stock pot, leftover rice, leftover bok choy. Yesterday I yearned for when I could buy a bag of salad without caring how quickly even the freshest greens spoil. Yesterday I yearned for clean dishes and a clean refrigerator. But yesterday I could tell you how someone waited a little longer to hold the elevator door or how the Walgreens clerk heard me sniffle and say, I hope you feel better. Or the helpful woman at the post office said, oh, don't worry about it. People forget the postal rates all the time. And today as I entered the liquor store, an actor rushed past me to buy lemon drops, then dashed to the theater next door. I bought a two liter of Diet Coke, three cans of sardines and tomato sauce, and stammered, come sop me da, to the shop owner, who knew I said it wrong, yet smiled and nodded, completely and simply to me. One can forge documents, reinvent identities, concatenate, concatenate acronyms, be lost in our flags and our labels and our unfilled prescriptions and lists of the dead, though the cure for cancer may not cure cancer, or suicide, or a trip to the doctor. Who will whisper, I'll go with you, be scared with you, Trust what you say, and always be here. When two spirits peer into moonless native sky, when transsexuals crimp for conjugal visits with surgeon and syringe, when I'm writing now how even as she ended, someone always made sure her nails were absolutely perfect. Who turns off my phone, gets my, closes my laptop, gets a popsicle to ease my sore throat. Who are we? What is this? I think I am. What is that? But in all I give, I am yours. I am yours. I am yours. Build with me. Walk with me. Grow old and tired and share supper with me. And with you, I light the candle. And with you, I reheat the noodles. Or so we hope. We hope. When we are weak, we can say we know what it feels like to truly love. Today a sparrow was perched on the banana tree, so the hummingbirds were probably too frightened to land. And near the galaxy's core, a black hole stripped a pearl blue star into ribbons of fire, and poetry is all one has strength to hear. When we don't have enough daylight to waste even a little food, leftovers go to stir fry. Stir fry becomes soup, and soup is what a lover needs after a lifetime of saving the world. And that's the main poem. I guess you'll never settle upon the soul. But I, I hope I give to you. I know it's rough out here. I know Ithaca is Ithaca, but it's just never easy being trans. And thanks for existing in this world. Thank you for insisting on writing. Yeah. For making that, you know? I mean, I, I don't know what to say. It's just... Um, I hope you understand the important. book a little more deeply. <laughs> yeah. It's really wonderful to know the backstory about them, the artist, you know? Yeah. And, and all those details give so much more dimension to it. This is why, I, like, when I give readings, and, and the audience becomes smaller, it becomes an opportunity for me to give more. Okay, I'm going to, I actually, I am going to read just the last bit of the novel, because I did bring the novel, I'm just going to read just a little bit. So what this is actually about, is, and it's the end of the novel, and the idea is this is going to, my, my language might change because I'm going to drop into Hawaiian Pigeon just a little bit, mm -hmm. and it's just talking about, you know, um, I don't know, I just think it's a nice little ending. Okay, so basically what it is is this little group, this little dance company is about to go on stage and everybody's been kind of doubting them, but they're going to just destroy everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and this is just their interest. Just a quick thing. So a halal is a hula group. So, <clears throat> the little halal spread itself on stage. Violet and Francis and Eva and Irvin and Nona. And rather than stepping proudly or powerfully, they seemed to glide as if they were floating, pulling silence from the night. 
Each of their costumes was unique, unlike any of the others, but somehow they all worked together, like, you know, one of those mix and match sets of Japanese dishes, and their silence. Most people who could understand anything was happening, but even those who could, such as Millicent Ponui, when asked, how could silence be so powerful? Then from a distance, yeah, it seemed like one angel was singing, but was Noelani, yeah, but you knew that. Okay, so everybody was expecting Noelani to come out, but you never. Everyone was expecting cool people to play, but no, was chanting. And instead of Noelani, another of the dancers walked to the stage and began. Violet's smile was a smile of belonging to a choir, to a family, like one middle child or the plate, one plate lumpia next to the mac salad on the picnic table. Wanted, wanting to be wanted. Easy, like when the nighttime comes and stay time for sleep and you no question, cause you're tired anyway and you had one full day and you get everyone's lunch already and packed. Oh, it feels so good to have someone next to you. And you know the rascal kid's finally asleep because you can hear them breathing soft and quiet. And your husband already sleeping, and tomorrow, going to be just like that too. Even now, when her husband was no longer there, to visit the grave, to say, how much I miss you. And the kids are all doing fine, and they all stay grown up, and they just send Christmas cards, and a new neighbor get one dog that digs up all the vegetables, but they're going to get one rope. And now I stay performing with Noelani at one place. Oh, I wish. How beautiful. You could see this. But then again, I know you're watching from heaven, yeah? Hear that. I go smile for you. Then Saul lilted a melody over the ipu. Cam and Johnny Boy kicked in the guitar. And all of a sudden, it was music. One of the things I think, as a trans person, it's conversely very easy for us to write about family because we don't have it. And so the other, so they say, are there no trans characters in here? No, but there's the whole left from trans experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And this is something that I don't think our trans community addresses yet. Mm -hmm. And I think we need to be more about dreaming. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, what you saw here is everything I don't have. Mm -hmm. But because I'm a writer, I can, can make it. Make it. <laughs> yeah. You know, does it replace having family? Hell no. But it makes me at least feel that it makes me feel the ache. And sometimes feeling anything that's not having to deal with oppression is a good thing. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah.